How's it going everybody? So Universal just dropped some brand new information about the How to Train Your Dragon Land coming to Epic Universe next year. We got another great promotional video. We got some new concept art, some details on the website, new merch, a bunch of stuff surrounding this brand new land. And I'm gonna break down everything that we see right here in this video. From brand new attractions to dining, to meet and greets, to just land theming, this looks absolutely stunning in my opinion, so I just want to waste no more time and dive into the deeper details because this is really exciting here. Now, How to Drain Your Dragon Isle of Burke is one of the five worlds to be featured at Universal Epic Universe. We got the announcement of Celestial Park back at the end of January and all the stuff that that entails. So it seems like we are going to be going counterclockwise on the map as we sort of travel through each one of these worlds. At least that's what it seems like to me. And I'm really excited about this announcement in particular because How to Train Your Dragon Isle of Burke was one of the lands we didn't really know much about. And they did a great job diving into it with this promotional video at the forefront. So let's just hop into this video. I'm going to play some clips and I want to deep dive into what we see here. So let's just dive right into the video. When you walk through the portal into the Isle of Burke, you're introduced to a sweeping view of the island itself, almost right out of the movies. And that shot, in my opinion, is actually one of the best in the park. So right here off the shoot, you get sort of the centerpiece view of the land. You can see this little platform where people are sitting here. And that's pretty much what you're going to see right as you walk through the portal. If you just keep going straight, you're going to end at this point where you can overlook the water. And I think this is really a great way of laying out the land. You get to see all of the big rides, all of the big structures. Of course, you can see the sort of hilly structure right here in the middle, which is going to house the main dining location location, which we'll dive into in a second. We did learn that this area, the entire land, I mean, encompasses 15.5 acres with a total of 162,500 square feet of rock work. So this is a very large land, quite possibly the biggest land in all of Epic Universe, as you can see from this concept photo here, sort of an aerial shot looking above at everything in a similar view as to what we're getting in the video here. Also, I just want to say I love how colorful this land is. You know, you have things like the Ministry of Magic and Dark Universe, which are going to be very grounded almost in reality, like fantastical, but really like real historical historical settings, but lands like this as well as Super Nintendo World seem to be bringing a big pop of color into the park, and I really appreciate that. This is Burke. How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke takes place between the second and third movies. We call it Burke 2.5. This is the golden age of harmony between Vikings and dragons. You'll be able to see some of your favorite characters you'll be able to see dragons walking around. So this little next part here is one of the most interesting things I got out of this video, and that is sort of the story around this land. Of course, it's how to train your dragon with the characters from the film as they emphasize, but this is specifically set in one place and time between the second and third films. As they describe it, it's the golden age of sort of dragon harmony with the villagers, and I think that's a great place to set this land because this seems like a generally upbeat and fun area of the park. But having it set in one place in the timeline raises a lot of questions for me. It seems like they're going to go with the sort of Galaxy's Edge route and making this actually canon to the timeline found within the series. And while Galaxy's Edge, that kind of poses some problems based on some of the implications of that timeline, you know, character deaths and sort of time progression and things like that. It seems like this is actually working in its benefit because you get the characters as you kind of know them through the series. Of course, in the third movie, there are a lot of big changes the characters grow up, and it's not the same as the first and second film. So setting it firmly between those two movies, you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. You can have all the cool dragons from that second movie, while also bringing the characters to life kind of as we know them. I think it's a really smart way of doing it. They didn't really have to emphasize this. Will we be seeing direct nods found within the sort of streetmosphere or the shows and attractions? That's really interesting. Something I do want to keep in mind as we experience this land in the future. Mead Hall is one of the most iconic locations. So of course, we had to bring it to life. When you walk through the doors and, and through the vestibule and you see the main dining, I think it's just going to be fantastic. All right, so here we get a little preview of Mead Hall, which is in that sort of central rock work structure that you saw in that first piece of concept art. This is the main quick service location 
in the land and it's obviously themed to Mead Hall as you see it in the films which is really cool them sort of bringing that to life it's something I really wish they would do with like the Hogwarts Great Hall and it seems like they're trying to do that here and speaking of Hogwarts in the Wizarding World you're getting very similar style of food so lots of meats fish ciders ales things like that so probably similar to like the three broomsticks or leaky cauldron that you're seeing in the Wizarding World so just expect that kind of food but if you're looking for something a little different they also announced that Spitfire Green grill is going to have these flame seared meals so i'm imagining more like a barbecue kind of deal and then hooligans grog and gruel is going to be sort of like a food stand you can kind of grab and go some snacks i imagine lots of different places you can grab food it looks like there's going to be a good variety of food which is interesting as well and on top of food we also got announcements on some of the gift shops they're going to have in this land we have a shop called viking traders how to treat your dragon which looks to be this like candy store with very bright colorful murals on the wall looks really neat hiccups workshop which i'm guessing is going to be tied to one of the major attractions because hiccup plays quite a role in that attraction and then we have toothless's treasures which i'm guessing is this shop right here because you see some night furies and some light furies above the register it looks like you're going to be able to buy some dragon themed items here maybe some plushies maybe there's like an adoption ceremony like they have for the pygmy puffs in the wizarding world or the little magical menagerie store they have in diagon alley kind of like that vibe I'm imagining for this with the dragons. Hiccup's Wing Gliders is our family coaster. And Hiccup being the inventor that he is has developed a way for us to simulate what it's like to fly on a dragon. And Toothless is not very happy to say the least. He launches our gliders before wings are attached. So rather than a smooth flight through Burke, we're careening wildly, skimming across the top of the lagoon. It's really an adventure. Now moving on to attractions, we have Hiccup's Wing Gliders, which is going to be the signature roller coaster, the big attraction of this land, or arguably the big attraction of this land. Really looks great, looks like a lot of fun, almost looks like a Hagrid's style roller coaster in terms of intensity, but also layout. You're getting a lot of that sort of natural scenery, the views of the land, uh, kind of how you get the views of the Forbidden Forest in Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbreak Adventure. It looks like from this piece of concept art right here, we will have some dragons featured on the ride although i don't think they'll be like full-scale animatronics i don't think we're going to be going to that level they're probably just going to be figures like velocicoaster however the atmosphere is going to really carry this coaster and as someone who's not really interested in extreme coasters i like the family coasters i'm definitely pumped for this one i do like hagrid's although i love that they clarify that this is not like you on an actual dragon this is you on one of hiccup's creations that goes wrong because of toothless he doesn't want it to be like a smooth ride so i'm curious to see how that story is going to kind of be baked into the queue will we have a really cool pre-show is there going to be like a really elaborate queue i'm really interested about this because again this seems like the signature attraction of this land dragon racers rally is a ride where you all get to fly together and spin upside down as many times as you want you'll be able to create an experience that's as wild or as mild as you want it to be Next up, we have Dragon Racers Rally, which sort of takes the dragon racing concept from the films, brings that to life through a really immersive flat ride. This one, I'm gonna be honest, not for me. It's just not my kind of ride. Looks a little more intense for my liking. Cool for those who are interested in that, spinning and going up in the air and having control over how much you spin, how little you spin. I really love the theming here. And again, immersive flat rides are always a win to just fill out a roster of attractions in a theme park. So Fire Drill is a boat ride that is actually a game. You have two sides of the boat competing against each other with a series of mechanical targets. You will probably get soaked. Viking training camp is for our smaller Vikings. It is not only just a kids play area, but it's an area dedicated to teaching Vikings about all the classes of dragons. So next up, they talk about Fire Drill, which is really a curious looking ride. It is another sort of flat ride attraction, but with a little more of a competitive edge to it. You sort of have these targets that you can squirt with water and you're competing and they say you're going to get wet. So I'm imagining this is going to be a very a hands on style attraction. Very fun for the whole family. I'm actually really looking forward to this one. I don't usually like water rides in this context, but I really love the theming on here, how it's all kind of like wooden two dimensional flat. 
it just looks like a fun ride another one to add to the roster they also did mention the dragon training camp which is a really cool sort of kids play area i'm not a kid i don't have kids so this isn't for me but more kids play areas are the move i mean they're doing it with dreamworks here in universal studios florida and of course camp jurassic over in islands is a really great sort of immersive play area so more of these please let's have more of these play areas maybe one or two per park just for the little ones to have something to do I'm all for that. The Untrainable Dragon is a live show experience that really brings home the DreamWorks mantra of heart and humor. This is a Broadway level production. Now, while it seems like Hiccup's Wing Gliders is going to be the signature attraction of this land, I would argue that this is also in the running for the land's big sort of e-ticket attraction. The Untrainable Dragon, this really great stunt show, stage show. They already have this over in Universal Studios Beijing, and from what I've heard from everyone who's went, that it's absolutely incredible. Live actors, physical sets, giant dragon puppets, a 27-foot toothless that flies in the air. Yeah, this is going to be one to look forward to. This is what I'm looking most forward to because I think Universal knocks it out of the park when it comes to immersive action stunt shows, Born Stuntacular, Water World, all of those great shows. And it seems like this is going to be the signature show for Epic Universe. And again, it's already proven to be a success over in Beijing. So I'm happy they're bringing it over here for this park to have a big show like this. We have dragons flying overhead. We have dragons that are shooting out flames. And they're not just in the distance, they're right in front of you. You're gonna come face to face with Toothless and have a meaningful experience with this dragon. Giving guests that opportunity to recreate that moment where Hiccup puts out his hand. Everyone's gonna want that iconic shot that we saw. We always have to find ways to push the envelope and do things we've never done before. Now, this aspect of the land is something that really interests me, although it seems kind of small. The fact that dragons are going to be everywhere. They're going to be flying overhead. We could see some of the concept pieces. You have dragons in the air. I don't know if they're going to be like drones. Are we going to have puppets? Are we going to have it be almost like the sounds of dragons flying around, almost like we get in Galaxy's Edge, where they play the sounds of ships flying over to make you think they're actually there? Very curious how they're going to do this, but I also love how they're going to have dragons in the lands just roaming around or as like static set pieces to go and enjoy. It looks like this piece right here is just kind of a set piece that may react with something or maybe it'll just be a timed interaction like the dragon we have in Diagon Alley where it will breathe fire or breathe ice or some fun effect that'll really make the land feel more alive and I absolutely love this whole concept but wait it gets even better. Yes folks you heard it here you're going to be able to meet Toothless and Hiccup, as well as I saw Astrid and her dragon roaming around. So you're gonna have meetable dragons, but specifically, of course, Toothless is the star of the show, and you're gonna get to meet Toothless in a dedicated meet and greet space, and it's gonna be very interactive as they describe it, and that is absolutely incredible. Of course, we've seen meet and greets like this, like the Raptor Encounter and Triceratops Encounter. Of course, a lot of people are super hyped about this. I'm not the biggest meet and greet person, but even I want my picture with Toothless, so this is a great way to sort of close off this video. And last but not least, I do want to talk about the fact that there is now How to Train Your Dragon Isla Burke merchandise live on the Universal Orlando website. They have a youth shirt, which is really cool. It's got Hiccup and Astrid and some of the characters on it. You have this adult shirt, which is a little more minimal, but has that great How to Train Your Dragon logo. Some great colors on this one. A really cool themed mug, as well as a pennant, which is something that I want to get my hands on. And that about wraps it up. How to Train Your Dragon Isle of Burke announced officially by Universal Orlando. Orlando, what we can expect. What are you most excited for when it comes to this land here at Epic Universe? Is it the stage show? Is it the roller coaster? Or is it the flat rides? Let me know in the comments below. I think for me, it's got to be a toss up between the coaster as well as the untrainable dragon show. That show looks absolutely incredible, but really just exploring the land. I got to see it firsthand with Super Nintendo World, how interactive that land is. And if this is anything close to that, which I think it's going to be on that same level, I'm super stoked for what everything else at Epic Universe has in store. If you like this video and want to see more like it about Epic Universe, Universal Orlando, I do Halloween Horror Night stuff too, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot. It would let me know that you like videos like this one. So again, leave a like, subscribe. I truly appreciate it. Anyways, I want to thank you all for watching this video and I will of course see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.